before I start. To those watching online, praise be to God. Feel free to share, invite, and share to groups online because that itself is a ministry to God. Amen. Amen. So, two weeks ago, I talked about not letting anything deter you from doing God's work. Last week, I talked about Last week I talked about spiritual exercise and this week is the continuation is what are the rewards of doing God's work and the problems faced if you do not. So this week this is this message and it's a continuation of, from the past two messages. I'll start off with the rewards and end with what will happen when not listening to God's word. The first verse is Romans chapter 2 verse 6. Can someone read that please? Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Romans chapter 2 verse 6. Yeah. Okay. That's what you want. My Bible translated that differently. One second. It states, God will repay each person according to what they have done. And when reading the verse... I saw that there was a positive correlation. What that means is, when you do something, something else will follow positively with it. And what the positive correlation here was, when you do God's work, and the rewards you get, the more you do, the more you get. If we graph that, if you, had, if you did this much work, you'll only get this much rewards. If you did this much work, you'll get this much rewards. Can you see that? And so simply speaking, the more of God's work you do, the more blessings you get. Next verse, Galatians 6, chapter 6, verse 9. I'll reap if we faint not. So I'll read that again because some people might have missed that. Sorry. Let us not be weary in doing good, for at proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. The work you do does not go unseen in God's eyes. You will be rewarded timely. Sometimes you might be doing work for God ministry and sometimes you might be thinking why am I doing this what have I gained from doing this sometimes but what it states here is that that reward that you're seeking God will give it to you in due time everything doesn't happen immediately always behind the hard work or a successful story there's hard work in this sense, is that the work you do for God is equivalent to the rewards you will attain, like before, and the work you do for God will not go unseen in His eyes. And so what you do, don't think that you're not going to get rewarded for it. Because at the end, the main goal for all of us is to get the heavenly reward that is held for us above. And the next verse is James chapter 1, verse 12. I'll read this one. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Last week I talked about the fourth exercise coming from 
an external influence, that being God. Testing. Testing is where God's your trainer and you're the participant and God will put you through hard work so that you will be able to wear this crown of life. In real life, you go to a trainer to obtain a six pack. Here, you're going to God to obtain the crown of life. So when you go under testing, don't think, God, why am I going under testing? Think, God, I'm thankful because you're making me a better person than I was yesterday. Amen. Amen. And so what God's trying to do here is that your testing is making you grow bigger and better. And not only that, he says, I will reward you with the crown of life. A crown itself is something beautiful. People go to see the queen's crown, to see the diamond jewels on it. But the crown of life, a crown which God is giving you, imagine how beautiful that would be. The beauty in God's crown that he's giving you. God loves you so much that he's willing to give a crown for you. Imagine that. And so when doing God's work and when going under testing during that time, God will also reward you then. Sometimes you may be waiting like before. Sometimes you might not see it. But God will reward you at the end. Then, to those who do spiritual exercises, the praying, fasting, reading the Bible, and the testing which will come externally, like I talked last week, for them also there is a spiritual gift. That was talked about yesterday by auntie, which was very coincidental. It's becoming very coincidental now that your words last week came into mind, new words as he came to mind. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it speaks about these gifts. Yes. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and read from verse 4 to 11, please. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The last words in that was very important. As he will was stated in yours, in his as he determines. And what's that determining factor? Because if you're able to determine something, there's a factor involved with that, obviously. If you're able to determine some marks, the factor involved was the marks itself. In here, to determine those who receive the spiritual gift, the factor is the work that you do for God himself. And the rewards that you're going, it sounded like it was ongoing. These rewards and blessings were just ongoing. They will keep on going. It was like the spirit of wisdom to another, the message of knowledge by means of the spirit, to another faith, to another miraculous powers, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And it was ongoing. See, the rewards that God's held for you, for you doing work, is, it's so much. And to those of the world, this will seem crazy. But for you and I that do the work of God and once being able to do and show this because God will determine, my child, my son, my daughter, you've done this hard work. I can see that you've done it and so now I'll bless you with it. How beautiful that is. And these gifts are not even normal gifts. These gifts are extraordinary. The ability to tell prophecy is something that you need immense power of the Lord, immense healing and power of the Spirit within you. That's why last week I was talking about exercise yourself spiritually because these gifts once obtained, the amount of works and wonders in your works 
It's amazing. The ability to interpret someone's tongues, let alone speaking tongues is hard for someone. To interpret someone's tongues and be able to say this is what they said. Imagine how beautiful that is. Imagine how beautiful of a gift you can obtain when doing this hard work for God. Because I tell you right now, though you might not see it now, God will reward you in time. Like it says in the Bible, there's a season for everything. There's a season. And in here, getting these gifts, doing these hard works to get the determining factor to get these gifts, there's a season for that also. But remember that the determining factor. It makes it sound all nice at the start, but the determining factor, the fact that you have to do God's hard work for this, is the most important thing here. Now, I'll give the last reward that you'll get. And this is the most important. This is the one that means a lot for all of us here. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Can you read that, please? And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Back, back to the idea of work. There's, there's key words here. Work, quickly, reward. First thing is quickly. God's coming soon. You can see it in your eyes that God's coming soon. The news that you're hearing every day, God's coming soon. Before I came, before when I was heading to church today, I thought, God, I didn't hear that much bad news this week. And then Dad quickly, suddenly in the car said, in Andhrava in India, a coach broke down and drove into people, killing many. Andhrava, something like that. God's coming soon. You don't hear good news day to day. It's bad news continuously. It's always bad news. Breaking news is 24-7 on the TV. To hear good news is now like something so rare, like finding a jewel amongst all this news. And so God's coming soon. First and point of point. Second is that he's coming with reward. But then what does he go on to say? Your work Back to the idea that doing God's work is so important that if you want that reward that he's coming with, your work is that determining factor here. This is what me and you are here for. So that when he comes, we do not know when he will come. But when he comes, we have done God's work correctly, in time, following as it says in the Bible. And then that determining factor will say, he'll say, okay. You've done my work. Here's the reward. And what's that reward you're thinking? What's this reward he's talking about? It's heaven. It's, you're thinking how hard is getting to a medical university itself, right? Or getting to Imperial, Cambridge, Oxford, whatnot. Getting to heaven has an even harder entry criteria. You're worried about your grades. You're worried about your personal statement for whatever job you're getting. Your CV you're worried about. God's entry requirements are so much more. You're worrying about Oxford, Cambridge. Worry about heaven first. Because the entry requirements there are much harder to get. Much harder to get than what you can get for Oxford and Cambridge. Because the work that God wants you to do, He wants you to do more. Sitting here every day is not what He wants. After, you, after I've given this message, God expects you to tell someone in your workplace, tell someone of your friends. That is the beauty of this. To this you just learn and be able to give. Spread the word to all nations, God on, goes on to say. Spread the word to all nations. Keeping the word to yourself is selfish. Just saying, Jesus is my savior is wrong. Jesus is our savior. Amen. 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 So go on. So now that's why I'll go on to the problems you'll face when not doing God's work. It sounded sweet now, the rewards, but the problems are much bigger. The problems you face are harder. See, not getting accepted into Oxford and Cambridge is okay because you can go to another university. 
not getting accepted into heaven is a different story because there's no other university to go to. There's no other heaven to go to. There's only one heaven and everyone else down there. You know, the story isn't sweet. There's no happy ending in that. And so let's go on to, now let's see what God has to say when you avoid doing God's work. The main person that I'll talk about today, you should know, who do you think I'll talk about for those who avoid doing God's work? Who do you think I'll talk about? Come on, speak up. So long, Bible character who refused to do God's work. Jonah. Jonah. What did he do at the start? Refused to do God's work. Let's read it. Jonah chapter 1. From Jonah chapter 1 onwards. Let me not read all of it actually. Let's, let me give a quick intro before we go into reading. So Jonah has been asked by God to speak to the people of Nineveh. The people of Nineveh are wicked. They're not doing as God asked them to do. They are following immoral paths and doing things that God detests. And so God goes out to Jonah and says, Jonah, go tell the people of Nineveh that your God, that I do not like what they're doing. But Jonah being Jonah said, no, I don't want to. So he starts to run. And let's see what happens here. Verse 3 onwards. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarnish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship for the port. After paying the fares, he went abroad and sailed at Tarnish to flee from the Lord. So Jonah's quickly found, what is my escape? Uber, no, not possible. Taxis, not possible. Bicycle, no one there. Okay, let me quickly run down to the sea. Boat, boat was the option. So now Jonah's on the way. Okay, I'm going to escape from God. I am ready. I am on my way. I am following my own path. I am following my own morals. I am following my own. I'm being what I want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm following what I want to do. This is Jonah's thought. And okay, I have now escaped. So now it's on there. Verse 4. Now, then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose and the ship threatened to break up. Everything was going good for Jonah. I nearly escaped. Boat is ready. Then God said, no, 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 no. God quickly gave a powerful wind. The ship started breaking apart. The ship started rattling. And what does it go on to say? Verse 5 onwards. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own so-called God. And they threw the cargo into the sea and to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone down below the deck and he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Everyone in that ship now is panicking. What's happened? There was no storm predicted today. Nothing was there. But the ship's rattling, shaking, being forced to nearly break apart. Everyone's scared. But Jonah's there sleeping, thinking, I escaped from God. Jonah's thinking, nothing's going to happen. Six onwards. Then the captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots and find out who is responsible for this calamity. Everyone's turning. Okay, is your God the problem? No. Is your God this problem? No. And then saying, Who is this? Who is this problem? Captain is thinking, Okay, is everyone asked their God? Nothing happened. Hey, who is this guy sleeping on the bottom? Goes down to Jonah. Hey, wake up. Ask your God. What is he going to say then? Eight onwards. So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? Where is the country? From what people are you? Everyone worried and angry, asking questions. Why did you do this to me? What did I do to you? You know, the voice starts changing. When you're angry, your voice goes into some different voice. Cookie Monster voice. I want you to eat it, man. And you get so angry. And now that's what everyone's there. Where are you from? What are you doing? What are you doing? And everyone's thinking, 
ஏன்ப்பா இங்கே வந்து ஷிப்பில் முதலாக எப்படி வந்தேன்ப்பா அந்த ஆஸ்கிங் ஓ யூ டூயிங் ஜோனா அந்த கோ அண்ட் டு சே ஹி ஆன்சர்ட் ஐ ஆம் ஹீப்ரூ அண்ட் ஐ வர்ஷிப் த லார்ட் த காட் ஆஃப் ஹெவன் ஹி மே தி சி அண்ட் ட்ராய் லேண்ட் ஸோ ஜோனா நோஸ் த பவர்ஃபுல்னஸ் ஆஃப் காட் அண்ட் எட் ஹி சர் திஸ் டெரிஃபை தெம் அண்ட் தி ஆஸ்ட் வாட் ஹவ் யூ டன் தி நியூ ஹி வாஸ் ரன்னிங் வே ஃப்ரம் த லார்ட் பிகாஸ் ஹேட் ஆல்ரெடி டோல் தெம் ஸோ தென் தி சி வாஸ் கெட்டிங் ரஃபர் and rafa I was getting hard to stand on the ship <laughs> let alone when you go on a ferry to france you, you feel a bit seasick imagine a storm hitting that imagine a storm hitting a ferry <clears throat> and the ship starting to break apart you can see pieces of wood cracking chipping and then what do they go on to say pick me up and throw me into the sea replied john on you i can't escape my god i can't escape Oh, I did a mistake. So he said, you know what? Throw me into the water. Throw me into the sea. You, Lord, can go back to wherever you're going, tarnish or whatnot. And instead, the men did their best to row back to the land, but they could not. They thought, oh, we can't throw him into the sea. They were kind-hearted still and said, no, let's try it. But no, God didn't let them know. I won't let you follow your own path. See, at the start, when you be arrogant and don't want to do what god's asking you to do you'll think i'm going on my own path i'm going correctly nothing's going to stop me nothing's going to stay me from this path but god will come and hit you like a brick god came and hit jonah with a storm nothing he can do and then i'll explain the rest of the story jonah was then thrown overboard but what can you do you in the middle of the sea and the god made a whale eat him up then the whale ate him took him to shore and spat him out and we'll stop it at there read the story in your own time if you want but what the main point is here is that when you try and go in your own path when you try and go on your own way when you think that you're right and you don't need to worry about anyone else god will steer you away from amen. that path amen tell your neighbor don't run, like don't run like jonah don't run like jonah because that's the biggest mistake you can do if you can imagine that satellites can pinpoint where you are from phone or just from imaging imagine you trying to run away from god how stupid of a thing that can be and so don't run abide by what he says because if not he will kick you out of the ship and make a whale eat you up and that's not good <laughs> imagine the breath of that whale they say the vomit is what the perfume is made out of a whale so maybe it might have smelled good never know but <laughs> never know but it could be smelly it won't be a nice path and so sometimes when you're being hit and you're thinking wait why is this job not working out for me why is this not going for me wait am i doing god's work ah oh, no i chose not to that's the problem when you refuse to do god's work when you refuse to listen when you refuse not to abide by what he asks he will take you out of course he will throw you out of your course and then make something hit you so hard that you won't bear it and then you will learn and then you will learn and be like oh, i should have just done and done the work of god in the first place i went through all of this and yet same thing with jonah he must have thought i could have just went straight to doing god's work why did i have to get eaten up by this whale you know i might have lost a nice pair of sandals in that point you know and so the main point here is that god will take you out of course and then in jeremiah chapter 6 verse 10 can someone read that please to whom shall i speak and give warning that they may hear behold their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken behold the word of the lord is unto them a reproach they have no delight in it those who don't listen have no delight delight has no more connotations for happiness 
when you avoid God's word, avoid to try to listen to it, in your life there will be a sense of no happiness. And moreover, it goes and say, you can't reproach. In other words, you can't stand in the presence of the Lord. And that's a good determining factor to saying who is not truly in the presence of God. For when you walk up to someone and they're not in the presence of God, they won't feel good. And that's the difference. Big point I hear. You have no delight or happiness. That's a problem you'll face. No happiness in your life when you avoid doing God's work. James chapter 1 verse 22 it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. When you try to avoid doing God's work, when you try to avoid listening to God's work, when you try to be yourself a Jonah, what does it say? You're deceiving yourself. You're lying to yourself. And so what? You're living in a bubble. You're not living truly. You're living in a bubble. You're living a fake life. And so here, what it clearly says, or you can take from it, is that stop being a sitter and start being a doer. Stop sitting down and not doing it. Start getting up and doing God's work. Because when you're not doing it, you're truly deceiving yourselves. You're lying to yourselves. And another very good example that I can't expand upon right now because of time is the people of Israel. They chose not to listen to God and they went through so much slavery, hardship. But when listening to God, God brought them delight. But when they turned away from it, problems started coming. So when you're doing God's work, here are the rewards and problems that I've set out for you. I've made it very clear what are the rewards and what are the problems. It's time for you to choose what you want to do. I can't make a decision for you if you want to do God's work or not. Like I can't eat for you. You have to eat for yourselves like my dad says. But it's your time to make your decision on do you really want to do God's work or not. Because the problems you face don't sound sweet to me. And that's where I ended off. And I'd like to finish with a prayer. Father God, for whatever we do, Father Lord, whatever work we do, Father God, let us reap those rewards, Father God. And for those that have not chose willingly to do your work, Father God, let them know the repercussions of not doing so, Father God. Father God, for the work, the work that we do with you, God, comes with eternal blessings, God, and I thank you for that. In dear Lord, every name I pray. Amen. Amen. And now, I'd like to pass it on to Brother Abel, who will sing a song for all of you.